Hello, mountain bikers. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jared. And we're here to tell you the most popular, trending, top selling mountain bike products of the month of May. Month of May. 2022. That's right. This is the stuff that riders are buying and looking at and checking out the most that we've been seeing trending and selling. And well, let's hop right into it. What's first? Let's do it. First up, we've got the Fidlock range of water bottles and accessories. These have been super popular lately. And if you're not familiar with Fidlock, basically it's a magnetic water bottle that attaches to this base on your bike. So it's pretty cool. Um, they make a bunch of different bottles in sizes ranging from like 450 milliliters to 800 milliliters. So small to big. And then, yeah, it's pretty cool. You basically just go like that and bottles on your bike. They should sell these as a, what do they call these things? Fidget? Fidget toys. Fidget spinner. Fidget toys. But it's a fidget toy. <laughs> it is. It's a fidget toy. It's a fidget toy, yeah. They're super it's cool. It's pretty nice. The popular fidget spinner. Kind of fun to spin it. And yeah. actually, so your use case that you mentioned to me was yeah. pretty cool. So you put this bottle on the bottom of your down tube. That's right. For if you want sort of an extra bottle. That's right. More than normal. Then you have only this on the bottom of your down tube so you don't have a big ugly water bottle cage hanging down there the rest exactly. of the time. And then on the occasion when you go for a long ride, you take one of these guys, bam. And then this one also has the, the, oh, yeah. the mud cover. That's right. The poop cover. That is so you don't get Giardia. So you don't get, oh, that's gross. Yeah. But I guess it makes sense if you're riding through cow poop and it flings up onto here and then you put it all over your mouth and. Gross. Yeah, so if you haven't checked out Fidlock, this is a pretty nifty. Uh, super, cool. super really strong nifty. magnet. Yeah, it's very strong magnet. And yeah, they have a bunch of other accessories too, like this one, that's a boa. You know, if you're out on a ride and you get a beer, you want to attach it to your bike, you can boa the beer on there and then ride on the mount. It's like, wow. eh, it's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. That's cool. Me too. Next up, P&W. These are pretty new, actually. New and trending. They are. The Range. Lone. Lone. Range. Lone range? I don't know. <laughs> I get all the P&W names mixed up. The Lone Ranger. All right, what the f man? We got to get together, guys. <laughs> the Lone Ranger. Yes. Well, they are the range pedals. They are the range pedals. The Loma the, are the other ones. Yeah, the Loma. Oh, ones. I get all these PW names. These are the PW range pedals. Uh, they are a composite pedal, so very, very wallet friendly, which is nice. They've got replaceable pins, pretty much like every other flat pedal yeah, these you can are get rad. these days. And then also, they are lightweight, under 400 grams, which is cool. Also, fully serviceable. You know, you get your bearings and all that good stuff swapped out, and they're good as new. P&W is kind of notorious at this point for just making really high quality stuff that nails a price point that's just kind of wallet friendly. Mm -hmm. And this is their first composite pedal and it looks amazing and super impressive. And they pretty much hit everything that you'd want to hit in a composite pedal in terms of the size of the platform, the replaceability of the pins, the rebuild, the rebuildability. Is Re that a, ability. You, can you say that? Rebuildability. Serviceability. Serviceability. That's, Serviceability. that's probably the proper word. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not even a word and I agree with you. Serviceability. But yeah, they nailed it. Various colors, good price point. Yeah, really nice stuff. And just, you know, kind of what you'd expect from PW. Good high quality mountain bike parts. Absolutely. So. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Something that I am personally extremely happy is now a top selling product for us in the last 30 days are the Trail One Components Hell's Gate Grips. So full disclaimer, we as in Worldwide Cyclery have an equity stake in the company Trail One Components and the eth ethos, ethos, I'm said ethos. The ethos of this brand is to make really good mountain bike components that all have a philanthropic give back element to a trail network. So the Hell's Gate grips, actually, when you buy these, one dollar goes directly to the Hell's Gate National Park in Kenya, and that's what these grips are named after. But these grips, I also personally had a good bit of influence on the design and really worked hard to make these things a great grip along with our crew over at Trail One. Um, they come in a few different colors and they're just really good grips that we really like. Obviously grips are extremely personal preference. So grain of salt there. I would call these a mid thick, mid thick? Mid thick. It's not like a thick grip, but it's not a thin grip. Mid, like me. Mid thick. Damn boy, he's thick, boy. That's a thick ass boy. <laughs> perfect perfect explanation but part of the the kind of reasoning behind the design these pads right here the cushions on the top are to cushion your metacarpals to reduce arm pump um, we have a little sort of what would you call this thing a ring a nub a nub i'd call it a nub a nub 
on the end. Uh, basically, so when you put your hand on it, you can kind of immediately know where the end of the grip is and then sort of where the um, sort of inner part of the grip is to just make it easy for your brain when you put your hand on there to recognize without having to look at it, sort of if you're, you know, place your hand on there correctly or not. And then, yeah, just a good overall comfortable grip that's got, in my opinion, some good, you know, arm pump reducing design to it. The pump, let's say you train your biceps, blood is rushing into your muscles, and that's what we call the pump. And just a really good high quality grip, three millimeter bolt with the lock jaw there, tapered core so you don't get any twist on these things. Good quality stuff that I'm really, really excited to see become a top selling grip because again, myself and a lot of the crew here at Worldwide Static Glory had a lot of influence on the design of, of this grip. So yeah, I'm stoked. They're fantastic. Well, they are fantastic. I think you said it all. I said it all. You said it all. By the way, you can also check them out at trail1.bike and there's a whole video of me three minutes telling you every little microscopic detail of these grips, but grips are grips. Grips are grips, but what is not a grip is our next product. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the, the Manitou, Manitou Mark, Mark IV. IV. Yes, I mean, would you just look at that? It's a thing of engineering beauty. This fork in particular is adjustable in travel between 80 and 120 millimeters, which is pretty cool if you have a bike like, a, I don't know, say a Trek Marlin, that you want to be able to say, well, I want to go 100 mil travel, like stock, or if you want to rake it out a little bit, go 120. You have the option to do that without getting any additional parts, which is very cool. Uh, but not only that, you can get it for a bike with 26, 27 and a half, or 29 inch wheels, or a QR or boost axle. Yeah, we have a YouTube video and article of the best forks under $500 and this is one of them. Uh, this is just a really popular fork in that price range, I think around 300 bucks or so. And yeah, it's an air fork, so it's much lighter. I think a lot of people that would be upgrading to this fork would have something that had a spring in it, which was much heavier and sort of a lot worse damping qualities. And this is a pretty good upgrade when you get an air fork with a lockout on it. Um, yeah, good, solid, amazing fork and really just good contender in that sort of under $500 price point for a fork upgrade if that's what you're looking for. On the other end of the spectrum, something that's currently top selling for you very fancy, expensive mm. mountain bikers out there. Yes, it's also an air fork and it's also a Fox 38, um, which is, I mean, again, just look at it. Look at it, Johnny. Look at it! Uh, it's got adjustable high speed and low speed compression and rebound. Um, you're not gonna find it for a 26 inch wheeled bike, but it's available in travel from 160 to 180. And it is the creme yeah. de la creme of what I call super enduro forks. Yes. You know what I mean? Super oh, yeah. enduro. Of course, we have an entire YouTube video all about the Fox 38 because it is a very iconic product in the mountain bike space and still really is just holding on to its throne as a fantastic suspension fork that is at the absolute top end of the spectrum in terms of functionality, performance, weight, stiffness, all of you name it. This is kind of the, the pinnacle of super enduro suspension forks right now. Too long, didn't read. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. And not only that, but it's got bleeders right here. We got a bleeder! If you happen to change elevation or your, you know, your atmospheric pressure is different. You can press you can on those. Press on these and then your fork is back to 100%. And that's the noise it makes. Next up, we have my personal favorite dropper lever, which is the Wolf Tooth remote. I think we've made some long time ago YouTube videos about this particular dropper remote and I love it. It's CNC'd, made in the US and it has this just amazing traction sort of mm -hmm. knurled, what do you call that? Like laser or I laser don't even know. Etch, it's, knurled. It's sick. It's just so cool. It has yeah. a sealed bearing. There's no play. There's no wobble. There's no cre It's just, this is just a high quality tactile experience when you push this baby to actuate your dropper. Precision manufacturing at its finest. Yeah. But it also has a breakaway point that's pretty cool. Like if you crash yeah. and there's just this tiny little like $2 plastic part that breaks instead of the whole thing. Um, so it saves your lever in case you crash. Yeah. For the record, I've actually never even broken mine. I don't crash that often though. He's never crashed. I have crashed. <laughs> I have <laughs> scars to prove it. <laughs> but it, 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 that is a cool design. There's a lot of good dropper remotes, but I really like this one. Uh, this one in my hand in particular, which has been trending this month, is the light action one. So the lever is actually longer than the traditional one. And why they call it light action with the longer lever is because when you have more leverage like that, it's actually easier. Just you, you need less pressure to push this to actuate your dropper, which 
it's kind of a cool feature and you think like, oh, that's interesting. And then once you use one, you're like, oh, that's, that's nice. That's butter. Butter? <laughs> it's simple. It's a physics thing. So it's a physics thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love this thing. This is my personal favorite dropper remote. But you said your personal favorite dropper remote is? It's the Axis one. This guy's bougie. <laughs> so, if you want to spend $800 on a dropper post, <clears throat> yeah. then uh, you can get the RockShock but reverb access I and the you one don't even have a... Dropper post for two bikes. So it's like I saved enough money for the <laughs> one bike to buy the one post for two bikes. So there tell, you your, tell your wife that. <laughs> It's amazing. It's the best right. way to do it. All but right. least but not last is orange juice. I mean, orange seal. <laughs> this is the sealant that we put in every bike that we build here. And yeah, basically what I didn't know is that the endurance sealant lasts longer in the tire, but it does not plug up holes as big as the regular orange seal. Yeah, so two versions. And in terms of sealants, pretty much stands and orange seal dominate our top selling sealants. There's been a few different ones over the years that have tried to compete with stands and orange seal and nobody really has. Yeah, the only one I think uh, is notable is Muckoff, who has climbed into the... They've you know, climbed, but I don't know. Yeah. It's still too young. It's too, still too early. Too early to tell. A lot of them are... A lot of them have climbed and gotten close to competing with stands and orange seal in terms of tubeless sealants. And then a year goes by and everyone's like, ah, eh, no, they're not as good. Yeah. So we'll see. Muckoff one might still be good. I yeah. mean, Muckoff is making, everything they've made so far has been really good in terms totally. of cleaning and lubrication products. So yeah. But anyways, in terms of good, reliable, high quality sealants, stands and orange seal, and this one right now in particular, the endurance sealant is trending and awesome. So if you want your sealant to last longer, endurance. And with that said, we're going to seal this one up with a thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far, we love you and subscribe. And please subscribe. And most notably on the screen now, you can see another YouTube video that we made all about mountain bike stuff. That's good educational fun thing. So just please click that because it's a great mountain bike parts video, mountain bike video, mountain bike parts video, Mount, something like that. Cheerio, Cheerio mates. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> All right, we better take a cut. Okay, cut!